Lone Green, uh, especially in the early, especially in the early days, uh, I had a problem with Lawn Green, and this is what it was about. He had come from Canada, where he had been on the CBC, Canadian Broadcasting Company, as a newscaster during World War II, and he was known, and he would report on the progress of the war, you know, many Allied defeats, the German, the Wehrmacht, would be went right through the Maginot Line like it didn't exist. And he would talk uh, about another defeat suffered by the Allies and this big, deep radio broadcasting voice. And he had a powerful voice. Uh, and uh, uh, it was called the voice of doom, actually. Then when the war was over, he came to New York and uh, Broadway and did a few shows. And then he decided to come to Hollywood. And as I told, I mentioned earlier, I caught him in a wagon train where he stood toe-to-toe -to -toe with Ward Bond and didn't give an inch. So I felt this guy had the quality. And then later that same evening at a party, he came in as a guest. And I had a chance to talk to him. And, he, and Rose agreed he'd be a great choice, Ben Cartwright, and he agreed to do it. The problem was he would speak with a great deal of strength. And... You know, there's the microphone, and it's so sensitive, it picks up anything, even a whisper. Um, so I would tell them, I would go to Deadly's, and I hear this voice come pounding over, you know, and I would tell them, Lawn, you don't have to shout. Who's shouting? <laughs> I said, you're shouting. <laughs> I'm not shouting. I said, yes, you are. So finally, one day, I listened to it, and it's so loud, it's so overdone, that I run back to the set and say, Lord, you come with me. Where? I said, I want you to come to the projection room. I want you to hear what you sound like. So we go back to the projection room, and he hears it. The other actors are speaking, you know, in normal voices, enough to communicate, not shouting. And he comes in with this big strident voice. And he's, oh my God. I said, on, I said, that microphone, you don't have to yell for it to hear you, undercut it, underplay it a little bit. So he went the other way. He spoke so softly, you felt. I said, no, wait a minute. You don't have to do what that for. Just speak in a normal voice. Be yourself, relax, enjoy the part. And to his credit, that's just what he did. And he became a superb actor for that role. See, what he did have on the good side he had great warmth as an actor, and he was not not timid about showing it. Uh, many actors are. Many actors are what you, what you call the wooden, stiff. They, they they have an inhibition about showing emotion, feeling. They have to be able to show it and not be overcome by it. Not easy uh, for some people most people, but he had that ability to show great warmth, you know, empathy. What he would do when he talked to Michael, he'd put his arm around him and hug him. Never happened before, never. That was one of his great, con and I complimented him. I said, Lord, that's wonderful. I like the kid. I said, that's good, and you show it. That's wonderful. You're not afraid to show it. Why should I be afraid? No reason, but not everyone can. You can. It's wonderful what you do. So, uh, and that became the basis for it. You know, it was just, it was just marvelous.